Hi everyone, this is Luigi. Uh, we're in San Francisco today in my home studio. It's kind of a temporary space and today we'll be walking through Jakarta, which is my upcoming track on the Anjuna Deep Explorations compilation. So we're just gonna go over a bit the story behind the track and I'll walk you through some of the key elements. Um, as well as giving you a bit of a, an overview of the gear I use uh, day to day. So Jakarta is actually a um, fairly simple track in terms of number of channels. It was written at a time where I did not have all this equipment, so I think it can inspire some people out there to make songs um, even just with a few samples. We'll walk through the track, you'll notice that I'm mainly using three or four samples and reusing them in different forms to create different elements of the track. I made this track uh, about three summers ago. It was after listening one of Lane Eight's uh, mixtapes. So it was one of those tracks where I was trying to go after a very precise feeling. Um, it was written kind of at the end of the summer, so I wanted to create something nostalgic. You can play in many different settings, but it still had kind of uh, dance elements to it. So here's the project. You see there are about 25 tracks. Uh, the first element, the first key element of uh, Jakarta is this sort of organ sound. Um, and it's kind of a sustained sound that keeps going. So basically it all started from taking this sample and kind of making it sustain. And basically what I did is like take a, a chunk of the samples and duplicate it and then reversing that so that you kind of have a continuous uh, sustained sound and duplicating that. Now you'll notice there will be some clicks in uh, the clip. So the way you can change that is um, use fades from Ableton, which basically are crossfading the sound from one uh, sample into the other. And so if we duplicate that section and then warp fade, make it as long as you want, consolidate all of that. So the shortcut on Ableton is Command J for that. Okay, great. So now you have your samples. And then what I did is create one of, um, use one of Ableton's devices called the Simpler, and you can just drag the sample into the sampler. And what I did is I went down two octaves and kind of found that sound. And then I also used another note, which is this one. So it was all about, the whole song is about those two out notes alternating. Um, and so if we go back to the original track, you'll hear that I have um, D playing and I'm also playing an octave below the same note. That's the first note and that's the second note, which should be an A. So it's alternating between A and D, A and D. Not to mention there are actually um, several effects I use to kind of smooth out, smooth out the sound and trick the listener into not uh, feeling like it's a sample. So first I added tons of reverb. And I'm not using sense here because um, it's kind of its own element in the track, so I, des I decided to dedicate it uh, its own reverb. As well as a, we got a ping pong delay to further smooth out the sound. And then finally, an imager. This is an awesome imager, um, great plugin um, and you can download it for free uh, on Ozon. Great, so now that we have this main element, um, it was just a matter of um, adding layers on top and creating um, as rich of a texture as possible. So the other element I've got going on is the same sample, um, but it's playing just one note and it should be playing the same note. So over here we're playing D again. So you'll see the main sample has four notes. Whereas the second sample is just alternating between the two notes. I'm using a, a compressor to achieve uh, the sidechain effect. The great thing about compressor, you can actually get creative because you need a dedicated sidechain track. So this is my sidechain track, a fake kick. 
which is muted, so you're not hearing it. It just acts as the sidechain track. Um, but the great thing about using a compressor is that maybe you can uh, align those kicks on different um, hits and kind of get very creative sidechain effects. To accompany that, I have a bass, very simple patch. Um, I use this VST a ton. I think it's pretty faithful to the. I think it's pretty faithful to the original, and so paired with the three of them, they should create a really nice texture. I try to add more atmospherical elements, so something that really has helped me. Right now, you noticed probably have noticed this track on the uh, project is actually muted. If I turn it on, you might hear a little bit of white noise. Basically, a uh, rain sample. Ableton has an effect called vinyl distortion, which has a built-in crackle noise that I just added on top. Um, and it's just a nice backdrop that kind of tightens the whole song up, especially at the beginning when you first uh, dive into the song. You can see how um, in this project, I've used the same sample to get very different sounds. It's the same instrument, but pitched way up. And the process is very similar. We've got a reverb, a ping pong delay, and this other plugin called Purest Gain. Uh, it's made by Air Windows, great plugin to do volume automation, uh, automation. The great advantage about this is that it has a slow fade parameter, which um, kind of follows more of an exponential curve when automating uh, volume, so that the fades are um, really nice and sound very natural. So I mainly use this uh, in the outro. Great, so uh, other elements in the track, we also have this element. It's another sample, I didn't change it that much. Um, and again, once again, it's pitched way up. Next up, um, the track starts picking up again. We're adding in some percussions. So here we see another element coming in, which is this arpeggio that is slowly um, creeping in as the track is building up. And for this, I used a reactor device called Monarch, um, very similar to the Mini V. Um, this patch in particular just sounded particularly nice um, for this track. I wanted something quite bassy. Uh, I made sure there was some noise there to have it a bit of character. Throughout the track, this synth actually never quite opens up that much. This is the most I open up the cutoff filter. In this instance, I used a softer synth, but when I first made this track, I actually didn't have any outboard gear. But uh, these days when I'm working on a track, I might incorporate some external hardware. This is my modular system. It has kind of more, it has some traditional elements that are typical of a very West Coast synthesizer, so like a filter, oscillator, as well as some more experimental modules like Elements, which is more based around physical modeling. Um, and the Plonk, which is a sample-based module um, that also uses some uh, physical modeling as well. So what I would do if I were to use the same MIDI, but for module synthesizers, just I would create a new MIDI track and then create an audio track where to record the modular from. Right now I'm just um, running the modular into the drum machine um, and then capturing the audio there and sending it straight into Ableton through USB. Let me just silence the vinyl crack over here. So I'll copy the MIDI. I can just tell the MIDI to send um, the messages to the Arturia beat step. Make sure I'm listening to it as well as the audio track and then send it over. I'm gonna gently bring in the modular. So another module I use a lot on the module is Clouds. Um, it's a mix of a granular synthesizer and a reverb, and it interacts really nicely um, if you feed it some audio, as well as automate some of the, its parameters. So I tend to use this on lead elements a ton.
You can also pitch um, the wet effect. Yeah, so there you have it. Always nice to bring in some uh, upward effects, especially with a modular synthesizer where the results can often be kind of unexpected um, and they can always bring your track in a new direction. So I definitely encourage to try bring your production out of the box a bit as well. Now that we've done a bit of the melodical elements, we can start focusing on the percussions, which are pretty much the other 50% of the track. So I wanted to go or kind of organic sounds that would go with this track, which is very lo-fi, very nostalgic. I try to have a mix of organic and inorganic elements. I think a key uh, loop that I've used in this track is this one. It's a sample that I pitched up 11 semitones. The processing on this is actually pretty light. I have a filter delay. The other element is this sort of clap. This is a uh, sampler. This was the original sample. Tiny bit of a cue here. I have a, just a standard saturator. We kind of get a lot of warmth and cohesion throughout the piece. The other element is this hi-hat. As you can see, I didn't actually EQ this. I wanted to have the full spectrum. Is that my phone? Okay, don't have your phone on when you're shooting those videos. <laughs> Great. Other hi-hats in the track actually come way later, around the four minute and a half mark. Those are the two extra hi-hats, slightly pan on the left and right to get a nice stereo field. They actually are not following the same pattern to kind of get a little bit more of groove. All three together, they should sound like this. And I'm sending all three of them to a Kind of medium delay, uh, sorry, medium reverb. This is the RC48 by uh, Native Instruments and Soft Tube. It's a great reverb unit. Another important element is the clap. I wanted to kind of come up with an original sound, so I've used a mix of uh, three claps. I wanted something quite short, kind of a 909 clap. This one is not even a clap, it's very much shorter percussion element. I wanted to add a bit more of attack and crispness to the clap. It's nice to have both real recordings of claps and the 909 clap. Okay, the kick. The kick is the most important element in a dance music track. For Jakarta, it came together kind of in an odd way. I've actually started from this sample. So if you go here on the controls pane, uh, there's actually an amplitude envelope and also a pitch envelope. I've enabled the pinch envelope, pitch envelope and have a pretty short decay, it's like 32 milliseconds. And you can hear now that it's much stronger. You'll have to increase the amount, so by default it's zero. But as you increase it, the peak will go up. And if you go down a couple octaves, you already have somewhat of a kick jump. If I hold the key, this kick drum is gonna go on forever. So you wanna limit that. So I use the DK to get it to about 500 milliseconds. And then I wanted to remove a bit of the top end because as you'll see later, I've used other, two other kicks to model the top end. So I just applied a low pass filter. So this is the result. Of course, this by itself, it's not enough to drive the track. So if I disable the other two parts of the kick, you have this. So that's not, uh, that's not quite enough to drive the track. You wanna have 
a bit more of a top end so if the DJ for example is cutting the low end you can still hear the kick and there's still a sense of drive in the track. So to do that I've used um, this sample over here. As you can see I'm cutting everything below 300, I'm not interested in the low end. And then the other element, it's very tiny, um, you can't, almost can't hear it. And so all together they should sound like this. You can hear the click adds a little bit more of crispness. All right. Uh, the last element we haven't covered yet is the voice in the breakdown, so here it is. Uh, I call this track Open Your Mind because I think the original sample, that what, that's what the original sample was, say, was saying. So the original sample for this was actually... Open your mind, mind. And I cut it like this, so let's see. Mind, mind. So that was the result. And then I kind of pitch it way down to get this effect. And then it hits different notes. And then this. And then it hits a final um, high note. Uh, it cuts kind of abruptly. I try to drench it in uh, delay and reverb, um, as well as cueing it a bit of it to get rid of the lower end, bumping it up in the mid highs around 2K, 1.5K, limiting it. And that was Jakarta. Look out for it uh, in the upcoming Anjuna Deep Explorations uh, compilation. I'm very excited to uh, debut on the label. Um, this has been a very important track for me and I hope you enjoyed uh, the walkthrough.